So I'm going to talk about our platform for modular parametric hardware verification in Cork called Kami. Uh, this is joint work with my team at MIT. First, let us take a look at the hardware verification landscape in the industry. So testing dominates hardware verification, currently in the industry at least. But that is not to say formal verification is not adopted. Uh, it has made great strides in the industry for hardware verification. And uh, the verification, formal verification is basically in the form of assertions. Uh, you write uh, linear temporal logic based assertions and you have standard industry tools to check if the assertions are true with respect to a particular hardware design. For, for instance, if you have the system shown in the figure uh, containing three registers, foo, bar, and bas, you can write assertions of the form. Uh, if foo and bar are both true, then eventually bas will become true. And you, you can very easily verify such assertions. But you don't have any tool currently in the industry which does full system proofs. So you cannot uh, specify the full system property in any meaningful manner other than in the form of various asser assertions. Um, let's contrast that with the state of the art in software verification using proof assistance like Cork or Risible. So you have a program to verify, let's say a implement, an implementation of an SQL query. Um, so you write the program in the form of several functions, and each of these functions have their own specification lemmas, and you use the proof assistant to prove that the function meets the specification. And you also use the proof assistant to prove that the composition of these proofs will give you the overall property which you want, the full system property. And uh, all these are written using the proof assistant, the function, the proof, and the theorems. Um, you'll be, from the functions, you'll be ex able to extract Haskell or a Camel code, which you'll run through the standard uh, compilers to generate binaries, which are run on processors. We want to replicate this verification methodology for hardware. What do we mean by that? Instead of writing software programs, we want to write hardware programs. So a hardware program would be a multiprocessor implementation. And we want to verify that it obeys the ISA specification, a multi-core ISA specification, if you may. And these hardware systems are written, again, as a collection of components, hardware components here. Uh, and each of these components will have their own specifications, just like in the software world. And you, we provide this infrastructure called Kami, which, is, which has several components. One of the components is a DSL and Cork, which allows you to describe this hardware, uh, all the components of the hardware. Then we, uh, we also define a semantics in Cork, and we provide several useful theorems and proof automation tactics in order to give a proof uh, saying that the components, each of the components, obey its specification lemmas. And we also have proof automation to compose these proofs to give you the full system property. And just like in software, we can extract the code, the hardware code which we write in this DSL into what is known as BlueSpec code. What is BlueSpec? BlueSpec is actually a hardware specification language, a commercially supported hardware specification language, which, uh, which has some following. It, it's, not widely adopted in the industry, but it, it has a significant, a significant presence in the industry. Uh, and the semantics of BlueSpec matches exactly the semantics which we implement uh, for our Kami system. So it's, it's a natural target for us. And using the commercially available BlueSpec compiler, we can <coughs> compile uh, the Kami extracted code, uh, the BlueSpec uh, code extracted from Kami designs into circuits. And you can actually run these circuits on FPGAs, or you can tape out chips and run them. So this is basically the me methodology we are espousing in this work. So what does it mean for hardware to be correct? For software, it's a, so, sometimes it's a straightforward problem, uh, question. I mean, so it has a straightforward answer. For instance, if you want to check if a particular SQL query implementation is correct, with respect to the SQL query, all you need to make sure is for every input, uh, the output which is generated by the implementation, which will be a list, uh, that should be a permutation of the set defined by the SQL query. That's all. But 
when it comes to hardware, it's a highly interactive concurrent system. So you need to give correctness in terms of the input-output traces. So what does it mean for an implementation to be correct with respect to a specification? It basically boils down to every trace which an implementation can produce, every input-output trace that the implementation can produce, you should be able to produce the same trace uh, using the specification. So that's our implementation relation uh, from uh, b between system A and system B. So B is a specification and A is an implementation. So in some sense, you write both the implementation and the specification in the same DSL in Kami. Uh, the <coughs> implementation is simply an optimized version of the specification and you check if the optimization is correct. So that's what hardware verification basically boils down to. So how do you write hardware systems in Kami? You basically, as I mentioned earlier, you basically write a bunch of components. We call them as Kami modules. And each of these modules contain three components. You have a private state, which can be accessed only by the module. You have a bunch of rules, which perform or which initiate state transitions uh, of the private state in the module. And then you have a bunch of methods which allow other rules, rules present in other modules to call them in order to enforce some state transition in this module, in the module which defines the methods. So the most important property or semantic property of this system is that the rules which enforce state transitions are atomic. So in this particular case, rule one is executing, so it can potentially access the state present in module A, and it can also call, it in fact calls a method in module B which accesses the state in module B. But notice that every other rule in the entire system, rule two doesn't fire, uh, the rules in B, they, they are also inactive, and the rules in C are also inactive. So this is known as one rule at a time semantics in <coughs> blue specs terminology, but uh, it's basically saying that the rules are executing atomically. And this is kind of bad in terms of performance, right? Be basically, you're allowing only one rule to execute, even though you, you can have several uh, other rules which have nothing to do with this, which are sitting idly. So it is the role of the compiler to schedule multiple such non-conflicting rules. That is, if rules don't access the same state and so on, you can schedule them simultaneously in one hardware clock cycle. Uh, this increases parallelism and hence gives you good performance. And the blue spec compiler actually does this, uh, performs a good job of scheduling. And it can also be potentially aided by user inputs to decide which rules can be scheduled, so on. And I'm not going to talk about scheduling here. All right, so I also talked about I.O. traces, input-output traces produced by the, uh, as a basis for hardware verification. So how do you generate the input-output traces in a Kami module? So let's look at this module. Uh, A, which has two rules, R1 and R2. R1 calls a method F, and R2 calls a method G. So when R2 fires, that is, R2 executes its rule, then let's say it calls method F with an argument A and gets back a return value R from the environment. So now you create this label, an I.O. label, which says that this method f has been called with this argument and gets back this return value. Similarly, when rule R2 fires, you generate a similar label. And you can also have labels created because an, the external environment calls some method defined in this module. H is a, a method defined in this module, which can be called externally. And in this case, we generate a different type of label called an execution label. We, we say that H got executed and the external environment passed the parameter C and we return back a value Y. Uh, you can have arbitrary combinations of these called and execution labels in one step of transition. The, why, why does this occur? This occurs basically because let's say R2 calls method G, which triggers the external environment to eventually call method H. So that means uh, you have an execution of H as well as the rule two gets executed calling G and so on. So yeah, we permit arbitrary combination of these uh, atomic 
entities of a label, the execution and call method. So this effectively makes a mo Kami module equivalent to a label transition system. You have a trace of labels and it in fact obeys the compositional properties of a label transition system. So if you have another module B, which produces the IO trace shown in the figure, um, tau represents silent internal transitions, uh, which does not create any communication with other modules. So if you were to compose modules A and B, notice that the method names and arguments and return values match in the first label for A and B. It's just that one is a call method and the other is an execution of that method. So you have this dual with matching arguments, uh, names, and return values. In, in that case, in the composition, you'll end up with a silent or internal label, uh, whereas the rest of the labels are, in this particular example, copied as it is. So this is the semantics of composition of modules and the semantics of how uh, input-output traces are produced in Kami modules. Now, uh, let's look at how you verify modules using Kami. What do you do when you want to verify a complicated math theorem? So you will decompose the theorem into several lemmas, and for each of these lemmas, you'll perform, say, induction. Uh, you'll also perform certain simplification, which is essentially reduction, and you'll use some equational reasoning to rewrite certain terms, and you'll keep repeating the process over and over again till you discharge all your goals. So how does it translate to Kami? So in hardware, you have uh, you want to prove a theorem about a collection of modules, so you decompose the problem into lemmas for each of the modules, uh, which, and this follows uh, exactly the separation of modules in the design. Uh, that is, uh, if you have a bunch of modules in the design, then you have a bunch of lemmas corresponding to each of the modules. Uh, then instead of induction, we have a specialized form of induction, which is simulation. Uh, it's essentially induction on simulation uh, on uh, transition sequences. And we have a specialized form of simplification. We call that as inlining, basically because if you have multiple modules, um, then your state transition is spread across uh, m uh, different modules. Because if a rule invokes a method in another module, then in order to understand what state transition happens, you have to no, uh, under, uh, separately consider the rule and the m method and so on. Whereas if you are analyzing this system on the whole, you would want it to be combined, so you would want to inline the definition, the method definition in the rule body. And I'll talk more about this in a couple of slides. So that's inlining. And finally, uh, instead of equational reasoning, you have module substitution based on the implementation relation. So uh, in, in some sense, in Kami, the smallest term which can be substituted is a module. And you also substitute it based on the implement relation as opposed to equality. OK, le let me go over these steps one by one. So modular decomposition and modular substitution go hand in hand because, as I said, the smallest uh, atom in Kami is a module. You can substitute only a module, nothing smaller than that. So, we have a powerful theorem in Kami, which we call a substitution theorem, which says that whenever a module X prime implements a module X, then in any context, you can replace X with X prime. So that's exactly what this is. Why is the context? So why is this useful? Let's say you have a specification containing three modules, A, B, and C, blue modules. Uh, then clearly this implements itself because the trace which it produces is the same as the trace uh, it produces. It's trivially true, so it's a trivial theorem in Kami. But then you can substitute each of the modules separately. So you can substitute A with A prime, provided that you prove that A prime implements A. Similarly, you can substitute B with B prime and C with C prime. So eventually you get a theorem for free that the orange modules, sorry, the orange modules implement the blue modules. OK, let's go back to inlining. So why do we need inlining? Let's say you have an implementation containing two modules, as shown in this picture. Uh, one module calls a method of another module, and the specification is a single module. Uh, in order to prove that the implementation is sound with respect to the specification, 
you would have to analyze, if you analyze these modules from first principles separately, then the state transition of the implementation is spread across multiple modules. So if R1 fires, then you have to consider the state transitions uh, enforced by R1, and you also have to consider the state transition enforced by S. Instead, if you can combine the two modules, then it's easier for you to analyze. It's similar to simplification step uh, in normal math proofs. Um, and the combination is simply a union of the states, the union of the rules, the, and the union of the methods. But uh, you need a theorem which says that this, in fact, uh, the unions is, in fact, equal to the uh, original composition. So we have such a theorem. In fact, we have a stronger theorem which says that if you inline the definition of the methods in the rule bodies, then uh, it produces the same trace as the original composition. So this is what we keep using. And finally, we discharge the lowest level goals doing a simulation proof. Simulation proof is the typical one. Uh, when the implementation makes a step producing a label, then the specification should make uh, some step producing the same label, which preserves the simulation relation of the state. In order to prove this, in, in order to apply this simulation proof, you will probably have to write down several invariants manually in Kami. Uh, so this is where the manual part of Kami comes in, and some of the goals can be discharged automatically using the Kami tactics, but for some you have to do some more work. Um, so as uh, to demonstrate the efficacy of our system, we built a multi-core, uh, multi-processor system obeying the ISA specification, and with, it adheres to the sequential consistency memory model. We implemented the RISC-V ISA. Uh, so RISC-V is an open and free ISA. It's doing to the processor world what Linux did to the operating systems world 20 years back. So if you're not already jumping on, I, if you're not already informed about this, you should probably go read about this and jump on the bandwagon soon. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the processor which we implemented is actually a fairly complicated four-stage pipeline. Uh, and the memory system is a two-level cache hierarchy implementing the uh, so, so the caches maintain coherence uh, using the MSI protocol. And after we implemented the system in Kami and verified its correctness, we extracted the blue spec code, generated circuits using the blue spec compiler. We can actually write multi-threaded C programs like the Decker's algorithm. We can compile it with standard GCC, uh, the port for RISC file, uh, to generate the binaries. And we can embed the binaries into the instruction memory of the, F, uh, of the circuits and run them on FPGAs. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, we have developed this Kami platform to specify, implement, and verify hardware systems. Uh, and we also generate circuits from that. Uh, in the future, we want to build a library of hardware components, including complicated processors, which, can, which uh, currently the processor does not boot Linux. And we want to be able to boot Linux, support privilege mode, and virtual memory, and so on. And we also want to implement several cache coherence protocols using this. We also want to verify the compiler from Kami to circuits. Right now, the BlueSpec compiler is not verified. And we are rewriting that in Coq in order to verify that. And so we are also building some support for information flow-based analysis for Kami designs. It's uh, pretty complicated because there's a lot of non-determinism here. And finally, we also want to have a transliterator from BlueSpec designs to Kami because you have a uh, uh, BlueSpec has a lot of users in the industry, um, who, uh, and as a result, there are a lot of existing BlueSpec designs. Uh, we don't want to keep redoing the work over and over again in Kami. Thank you. I can take questions.